Thank you very much for the opportunity to, to speak in support of this enlightened, humane, informed, realistic and practical bill. And let me uh, state um, that this bill is about decriminalisation. And I think efforts to call it uh, a, to be about something called legalisation of drugs is a red herring, is misleading. And I'm disappointed that Senator Riley uh, and Senator McFadden uh, or Senator Byrne have, kind of, ha have, have, have talked to that because this bill is not about that. We might talk about that another day, but this bill is not about that. And I am pleased that this bill, which Senator Ruan and Senator O'Reardon have brought forward, will be uh, adjourned and we will bring it back to this House sooner rather than later uh, after the publication of the drug strategy. I understand that's the, uh, that's the plan. This bill faces up to the fact that people in Ireland use drugs, maybe even people in this House now and in the past, maybe even people in this House tonight. It's a reality. We need to face it. It happens. This bill faces up to the fact that people have deep addictions in Ireland. This bill faces up to the fact that prohibition and abstention as an approach to drug use and addiction, the just say no approach, just doesn't work. We only have to walk around this city, Cork City or indeed any country town or village or community, or if we are being completely honest to know this from inside our own families and among friends to be true. The war on drugs, as Senator O'Reardon said, is well and truly lost everywhere and has been for a very long time. This is especially true for all the people who have died as a result of addictions or lived or are living miserable, partial lives. Efforts and money wasted on future, futile uh, uh, endeavours. This bill faces up to the fact that criminalising people who use drugs or have addictions is unkind and doesn't work. This bill faces up to the fact that criminalising people for possession of small amounts of controlled drugs for personal reasons doesn't deter people from potentially harmful drug taking, doesn't help people with their addictions or reduce harm. Rather, it damages people's lives and their life chances, drawing people into and not away from the criminal justice system. There is a vast body of evidence and plenty of facts to back up this bill. You will have heard this evidence and these facts during the debate. I'm going to speak in favour of this bill, informed and influenced by those facts about decriminalisation and harm reduction, though I wish to use my time to speak in favour of this bill through the lens of people I know, or sadly, people I once knew. People like the man I knew well through Cork Simon, a marathon runner, a poet, a painter, a survivor of dreadful abuse in an industrial school, a man with drug and alcohol addictions. I remember when I met this man, he took me aside and told me, Colette girl, sleeping rough was heaven after sleeping in fear of coming after you at night. Drugs and alcohol masked his pain of abuse and trauma. I would go so far as to say that deep addictions are often driven by deep trauma. In advocating for this bill, remembering the young woman who died on Christmas Day from a drug overdose. Thinking of the woman I knew who died on the streets of Cork one dreadful Christmas week. The woman whose daughter I now meet on the streets of Cork, also in deep addictions. I read once, and it struck a chord, that trauma not transformed is trauma transferred. People like the young woman, a school friend of my daughter, abused and neglected to the age of four when she was eventually adopted, now parted from her own little girl, using drugs to ease all her pain. People like the young man I know who lost his job because being found in possession of a very small amount of controlled drugs and since his conviction he has drifted, lost his confidence, lost his way. People like a school friend of mine, a fellow Capricorn. Her birthday was in December, mine was in January and we used to go to each other's birthday parties. A woman with a son the very same age as my son, now dead, dead of an accidental overdose. Criminalisation of the possession of a small amount of drugs for personal use did nothing and does nothing but harm uh, any of the people I mentioned. Does nothing for the many people using drugs with addictions today or tomorrow either. I know from people from my life and work that people in deep addiction are not put off drug taking, often harmfully and fatally, because drug possession is illegal. Criminalisation does not bring health care, housing, clean needles, counselling, hope of job prospects, something to live for, nothing. It only wastes the time of the Gardaí and the criminal justice system. 
It only breaks the hearts of families desperate for help for the people they love. It only breaks the spirits of the people working against the tide, like community workers, like the GP Senator Norris talked about, uh, and others frustrated by the, by the futility of criminalisation. The effects of criminalisation and the chronic lack of the range and depth of supports needed by people who use drugs and people with addictions. Accessible supports, when you need them, where you need them, with kindness and with judgment. If you are an addict and you decide that tomorrow you want to get clean, you want to get clean tomorrow, three weeks' time is maybe too late. You need to be able to walk in now to the help you need. This bill, if passed, would single, signal a transformation in how we face up to the realities of drug use and addiction in Ireland today. Measures proposed in the bill would transform lives, would save lives. The establishment of an activist, kind, skilled, non-judgmental and holistic drug dissuasion services as this bill proposes would save lives and would transform lives. So I urge you to face up to the realities of Ireland, the realities of drug use and addictions, to be politically brave and courageous and know uh, what you know to be right. That instead of condemning and criminalising people who are in trauma, in trouble, to put our efforts to good and useful effect to help them, to support and not stigmatise people often in deep trauma and to back up this grown-up bill for a grown-up Ireland. So thank you so much again, Senator Ruan and Senator O'Reardon and all the civil society organisations and the people who influenced you and whose lives inspired and encouraged you to bring to the Shannon this enlightened, humane, informed, realistic and practical bill. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator. Senator Neil O'Donnell and my